Well, good afternoon. I want to thank you all for, for being with us today. We're here today to talk about security precautions we're taking to protect the safety of people around Capitol Square leading up to our rally planned for this coming Monday. I believe wholeheartedly in the constitutional right of citizens to come to their state representatives and make their views known. I also believe in the right to debate and the right to assemble. And I believe in the right to bear arms. But what we have seen and heard in recent weeks has the potential to go far beyond these constitutionally protected rights. We are seeing threats of violence. We are seeing threats of armed confrontation and assault on our capital. For years, Virginia citizens who want to speak up in defense of gun rights have peacefully assembled here at our Capitol. In fact, many of them did so this past Monday. But we have received credible intelligence from our law enforcement agencies that there are groups with malicious plans for the rally that is planned for Monday. This includes out-of-state militia groups and hate groups planning to travel from across the country to disrupt our democratic process with acts of violence. They are not coming to peacefully protest. They are coming to intimidate and to cause harm. State intelligence analysts have identified threats and violent rhetoric, sim rhetoric similar to what has been seen before other major events such as Charlottesville. Let me be clear, these are considered credible, serious threats by our law enforcement agencies. This intelligence comes from mainstream channels, both offline and online, such as alternative dark web channels used by violent groups and white nationalists from outside Virginia. These conversations are fueled by misinformation and conspiracy theories. Please know that we have been preparing extensively to protect public safety at Monday's rally. But no one wants another incident like the one we saw in Charlottesville in 2017. We will not allow that mayhem and violence to happen here. So we are taking the following actions to keep people safe in Capitol Square and in the city of Richmond. First, we have established a unified command between the state police, the Capitol Police, the Richmond Police Department, and our first responder teams. And I want to personally take this opportunity to thank all of them for keeping us safe. These agencies are working closely together to ensure seamless preparation and planning for this event. They have been briefing me and my team regularly and I have full confidence in our public safety team. Second, we are asking non-essential personnel not to come to work on Monday. Monday is a holiday for state employees and many others, and that is good news. If you don't need to be in downtown Richmond on Monday, please consider staying home. And third, no weapons will be allowed on the Capitol grounds. This includes everything from sticks and bats to chains and projectiles. These rules are similar to long-standing rules in airplanes and courthouses. This list also includes firearms. It makes no sense to ban every other weapon but allow fi firearms when intelligence shows a threat of armed militia groups storming our capital. To enforce this, I am declaring a state of emergency in Richmond from Friday evening until Tuesday night. Everyone should understand this is based on real identified threats that have been made. This order includes a prohibition of weapons on Capitol grounds. The prohibition is temporary and it will expire on Tuesday after the rally. And those who would bring violence into Virginia have left and return to where they came from. 
I have made this decision in the interest of keeping the public safe as well as our law enforcement officers. I want to be clear, the organizers have been planning this rally for some time, and I respect their right to do so. I welcome them to their capital, the people's capital. I believe them when they say that they intend this to be a peaceful event where Virginia citizens express their beliefs to their elected representatives. That's what democracy is. Unfortunately, they have unleashed something much larger, something that they may not be able to control. And so I call on them to disavow anyone who wishes to use Monday's rally to advance a violent agenda. And I call on them to discourage people from other states from coming to Virginia with violent intent. Hate, intimidation, and violence have no place here. I want to be clear. Virginia is always Virginia is always open for citizens of our state to meet with their elected leaders peacefully. That remains the case this coming Monday. Hundreds of Virginians do this every day. Most recently, earlier this week, the NRA hosted its annual lobby day. Hundreds of Virginians participated. And the day passed without incident. That is what peaceful events look like. I thank the NRA for hosting a peaceful event. Now I call on the Virginia Citizens Defense League and its members to follow the NRA's example and make your event a peaceful display too, as you have done in the past. Please do not dishonor Virginia or your cause. As we have planned our response to these events, I want to thank M Richmond Mayor LeVar Stoney for his cooperation in working with us. While the Capitol is the seat of Virginia's government, it is also in the middle of a busy city. I know that Mayor Stoney also wants to keep our citizens safe from potential harm. So in the following order, I will ask Mayor Stoney to speak and then Colonel Settle from the Virginia State Police, Colonel Pike from the Capitol Police, and Chief Smith from the Richmond City Police. They will review the plans for you. As the news media, you have the critical ability to help inform the public about these safety measures, and I thank you. Mayor Stoney. Thank you, Governor. Yes. Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon, everyone. As the home of the state capitol, the city of Richmond is well versed in lobby day and probably hosts more events and demonstrations than any locality in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We pride ourselves on being welcoming city, a welcoming city and committed to protecting the rights of all who live, work and visit our great city. And we are a city that views public safety, the protection of lives and property as our number one priority. That is why we stand prepared, unified, and ready to support and assist the Capitol Police, the State Police, for Monday's annual event. City law enforcement officials have been coordinating and collaborating for weeks with our state partners in planning and preparation to ensure a peaceful gathering in and around the Capitol. Our approach Monday will be the same as with any demonstration. We will ensure the right to assembly and speech and prioritize the protection of life and property. Petitioning your government, exercising your rights is fundamentally American thing to do. It is what makes our country great. And it is why I'm proud to be an American. In fact, I hope it is not lost on anyone that the person we celebrate on Monday in the holiday, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., gave his life in the nonviolent pursuit of equal rights for all Americans. So let me be clear. 
regardless of the day or the event, we expect everyone who lives, works, and visits our, our great city to conduct themselves peacefully, nonviolently, and responsibly. This means that violations of the law will not be tolerated. I repeat, violations of the law will not be tolerated. In conclusion, the city of Richmond is prepared and we look forward to a successful celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day here in your capital city. Thank you, Governor, Mayor, and good afternoon. I'm Colonel Gary Settle, Superintendent of the Virginia State Police. And I stand before you here today as a member of a collective decision-making body of public safety and law enforcement leaders engaged in planning and preparation for this year's Lobby Day on January the 20th. Our responsibility as a unified command is to assess and deploy the operational tactics and resources to maintain the security of Virginia's capital, Richmond City streets, the protection of lives and property, crowd management, maintaining civil order, and emergency response if necessary. Our public safety mission is to maintain the peace and uphold the law so that Virginians can have their say and rally at their capital on Monday in a safe and secure environment. Lobby Day is just that, a day for Virginians to respectfully engage their legislators on a multitude of issues. Our agencies have been working side by side to plan, prepare, prepare, and deploy resources necessary to balance the safety and the expectations of public, to balance city residents' expectations those who work in the city and around the city, state employees, visitors, elected officials, and our governmental leaders. There is credible intelligence to substantiate or to substantiate that a su substantial crowd size will be here in Richmond, and their public and officer safety concerns as well. The culmination of that intel and the potential threats associated with this particular event do cause us concern as a unified command and has heightened our awareness and has caused us to prepare in the manner that you'll hear in just a few minutes from Chief Pike and Chief Smith. Thus, the Virginia State Police will have a significant presence in and around the Capitol Square on Monday in support of the Virginia Division of Capitol Police and the City of Richmond Police. Violence will not be tolerated, and if that is your group or your intention on Monday, then you're not welcome. Protocols, prohibitions, and additional information and updates associated with Lobby Day will be made available to the public via, via our Unified Command Joint Information social media sites on Facebook and Twitter at VA Capital 2020. We encourage anyone who is planning to come to Capitol Square on the 20th to come prepared for the weather. Come prepared to have to walk and stand, possibly for extended periods of time. Come prepared for, for a large crowd. We're talking several thousands of people. Come prepared as the availability of food and restroom facilities are limited in the immediate area of the Capitol Square. Come prepared for a large police presence in the best interest of public safety. Come prepared to uphold the dignity of Virginia's public legislative proceedings in a peaceful, civilized, nonviolent, and safe environment. Thank you, and I would like to introduce the Capitol Police Chief, Colonel Steve Pike. Governor Northern Mayor Stoney. Good afternoon. I'm Colonel Steve Pike, Chief of the Capitol Police. And it's not only my duty to oversee the protection of Capitol Square, it is my honor. 
I don't take lightly the privilege of being able to come to work each day at the property that is a national historic landmark. I am humbled each time I walk in the doors of the Capitol building itself, designed by Thomas Jefferson and housing the oldest elected legislative body in North America. The vision of Capitol Police is now in its fifth century of existence and has seen many, many changes over the centuries. In the way we govern and in the way law enforcement protects that sacred process. Those changes have accelerated in recent years and we have worked hard with our law enforcement partners to provide progressive answers to meet those challenges. I want to thank Colonel Settle of the Virginia State Police and Chief Smith of the Richmond Police Department who have been invaluable partners to the Capitol Police in the past and they continue to do so today. Our agencies have established a unified command, spending countless hours working with our regional public safety partners with the deliberate desire to ensure the safe outcome for the Capitol Square, our legislators, and the visitors to these historic grounds. A few points uh, I want to mention about visiting the Capitol starting Friday with the emergency declaration. So starting Friday at 5 p.m., uh, Capitol Square closes and will reopen at 7 a.m. daily through the weekend. The two weekend access points will be the Northeast Pedestrian Gate near the Patrick Henry Building and the, and the other pedestrian gate located closest to the pedestrian plaza entrance at 10th and Bank Streets. The gate at 9th and Great Streets will be the only one available for pedestrian traffic Monday uh, for, the, for the permitted event. Those attending uh, will be required to proceed through a security access point on Monday at 9th and Gray Street, which we call North Drive into Capitol Square. Please be careful when you get into the Capitol Square, as you may see temporary fencing and other security measures that will be in place. If on Monday you plan to visit your legislators for lobbying purposes, we ask that you be patient and expect lines at our access points at the Pocahontas building. Uh, I'd like to also reiterate, don't forget about the Facebook and Twitter accounts under the name of Virginia Capital 2020 as the official distribution points for the media information. And finally, those coming to the Capitol can sign up for a free text and email alerts through weather, for weather, traffic, and critical incidents through the Virginia State Capital Alert Network, or vSCAN. You can find the vSCAN link at the top of the Capitol Police uh, website page, homepage, at dcp.virginia.gov. And I will turn the uh, podium over to Chief Smith. Thanks, Governor. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, William Smith. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Richmond. And uh, I think you've heard very clearly that we stand as a unified front with our public safety partners. This is not something that we roll out on Monday. It's something that we do year in and year out. We have a wonderful relationship with our local partners, our state partners, and our federal partners. And we work very well together in planning for major events. We are dedicated to ensuring public safety during this year's lobby day. We have a few road closures that are going to impact our downtown area. Those, those include uh, 9th Street, which will be closed from Cary Street all the way up to Broad Street, Main Street from 14th Street to 8th Street. These areas are designed to make sure that we have uh, adequate area to ensure that people can assemble and exercise their rights safely without, uh, without having to deal with traffic. Our downtown, for our downtown residents and businesses, uh, you should be aware of these events and you should know that they will, there will be a broad footprint of police presence throughout the downtown area. I'd like to emphasize a few points from the mayor. Our number one priority is public safety. And that means everyone who lives, works, and visits Richmond. We expect persons visiting to be respectful of others, their viewpoints, 
and to express their views peacefully. We stand ready and will take immediate action should persons choose otherwise. Well, we're not here to relitigate what happened in Charlottesville, but I will remind folks that uh, we lost three Virginians uh, uh, during that weekend, and we will do everything that we can, Mel, and that's why I have the resources standing behind me uh, to make sure that uh, Capitol Square uh, is safe and that Virginians are safe and that, that we don't uh, have a repeat of what we saw in Charlottesville in 2017. Colonel Pike, if you maybe would address that. Uh, on Monday, uh, the screening access point uh, is North Drive. It's typical. It's the same uh, setup that we use for the inaugurations. So we'll be asking uh, those that will be here to participate in that event. Uh, they'll be going through a, a screening checkpoint uh, there at North Drive, just like we have, uh, again, for the inaugurations. Yes, we will. We will. Yes, we will have magnetometers set up, uh, and we will be enforcing uh, the prohibition, the, the list of items uh, there as well. Just be the grounds. And if somebody tries to go through screening um, and is found with a weapon, what will happen to that person and the weapon? And what, like, for example, they get on the ground past screening carrying a weapon, what might happen to that individual? The screening, uh, obviously, if someone tries to get in and we detect a weapon, we're going to ask them to uh, peacefully go back to where they came from, whether that was the bus trip in or private uh, vehicle and take that weapon back and, and we were very clear on the front end that uh, if this becomes more agitated then we'll take the appropriate action but we don't expect that we we've had very good success in folks complying with that Yeah, I would just say continue to reiterate what they've been saying and remind these groups, uh, especially militia-type groups from other states, to comply with their uh, direction. Thank you. Well, the crowd size, it's always difficult to determine exactly, but certainly in the thousands. And we have made arrangements to uh, have these individuals be able to carry out what we uh, uh, hope will be a peaceful rally. I certainly am not going to address the, uh, the uh, specific threats. Uh, uh, some of these have actually been written by uh, or about Greg uh, from the uh, Washington Post did. But, uh, you know, threats like storming our capital uh, is one uh, specifically. Uh, weaponizing drones uh, over our Capitol Square uh, is another. Uh, there have been individuals uh, uh, on Capitol Square that have uh, had surveillance operations looking at our entry and exit points. Uh, I would just uh, reiterate that these are uh, legitimate, uh, they are real threats, uh, and we are taking them seriously, and the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing uh, is to keep Capitol Square safe and keep our Virginians safe. That will be determined.
Obviously, there are a lot of concerns. And again, I'm working with uh, very professional people. Uh, I'm going by their recommendations on how to best handle the crowds and uh, at the end of the day, how to keep Capitol Square, how to keep our surrounding streets, and how to keep Virginia safe. I have the authority uh, as your governor to do this, uh, and the uh, intent of doing this is to uh, keep Capitol Square and, and Virginia safe.